All right, looks like we have about 20 people so far. I know we're uh, expecting some others to join us here as we go on, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna share with you um, a PowerPoint that I created. Uh, apologies, here we go. All right, so the, the lecture that I'm using to take uh, some of the information from is Spine Health in the Workplace and Pain Prevention. And uh, today's agenda is going to be a little bit different than this, but some things that we're going to highlight are some sitting related complaints, some sitting posture tips, uh, workplace setup, and maybe some alternatives for the home, some sitting fatigue prevention, and just in general, a little bit about physical therapy and what we do at REACT. Um, how do you feel when you sit all day? I know that, you know, something that I've talked to with um, some of my colleagues, some of my patients, some of my friends that are sitting a lot more now that they're in at home. Um, you feel tired. Um, you feel restless. You feel sore, uncomfortable, and anxious. These are all normal feelings that I'm sure have amplified in the, in the last week or so, given um, what, everything that's going on. But the, the thing to take away from this is that you are not alone and that there are things that you can do to help minimize all these sensations and these feelings that you're going through right now. Some sitting related complaints that uh, I typically hear or that are common um, from these um, setups are headaches. Now there's a couple different types of headaches that we can have. We can have migraine type headaches, which are typically um, a visual or sound related issue that we may have. Um, we may have headaches that kind of get that C-shaped pattern where we feel like it, it rides up the side of our head and into our temples. Um, that can be stemming from some tightness in the, the neck musculature here. Um, we also have complaints of stiff neck. You know, if we're in a position where we are looking at our computer in this position for prolonged periods of time, you can see how this rounded shoulder posture is not going to be good for a long period of time, it kind of closes off the front part of the shoulders. It puts a lot of strain on the back part of the neck here. Um, sore shoulders, low back pain, um, tired hands, wrists, and fingers, all things that are common, you know, whether or not you're working on a computer, whether or not you're working on an iPad, if you're using your phone a little bit more, if your home setup is not ideal compared to what your office uh, setup is like. Um, just want to touch base to um, some other things that we're going to be covering for those of you maybe that have just joined. Um, some common complaints with neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, hip pain. And then in my presentation, there are some photos of some exercises, but I will also be demonstrating some other techniques that you can use while you're at home. So what do I do now? Um, let's say you're having some pain. Like, What is the proper workstation setup? Okay. Some other things that, you know, I'd like you all to take consideration of is to keep moving. You know, now that we're home, I'm sure you're all feeling a little more anxious where you feel like you're constantly pacing back and forth or maybe you're getting up and walking between rooms to kind of pass the time. That's actually a very good thing. I want you to get up and move. I don't want you to be sitting in a, or standing for that matter, in a position for you know, hours and hours on end. The best thing that we can do for our body is to keep moving. Our body craves motion. Um, something that I want to highlight before we kind of go into this too, um, in terms of posture setup is that, you know, there's a lot of information about what's the best posture. Is there good posture? Is there bad posture? There's a lot of different um, uh, trains of thoughts on this, but I will say for the most part, the things that I found most beneficial is telling my patients that it's okay to slouch. What I mean is that I don't want you to sit in a slouch position for eight hours a day while you're cranking away on your keyboard to respond to emails. What I will say though, is that it might not be ideal to sit with perfect posture, quote unquote, perfect posture for long periods of time. Our body and our joints and our muscles don't really have the endurance to sustain a position for very, very long periods of time. So I, I'm giving you all permission to slouch when you're feeling uncomfortable. And one position that you may have might be a little bit different than your spouse or your 
your child or your sibling or somebody else that you're sharing time with during um, this isolation period, you need to find what works best for you. Okay. And this kind of ties into the consistency is key. Be consistent. If you find something that works for you, stick with it for a little bit, but that doesn't mean that that might not change over the course of a week or over the course of a month. Something that we need to be aware of is that we're very adaptable as human beings. Um, I want you to be patient. Changes take time. Um, not everything that you're going to be dealing with is going to be resolved, you know, within a day or, you know, within a week. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, quote unquote, correct sitting posture. I'm sitting in a stool right now, but I'm going to pull out a chair so that we can go over that. I'm going to adjust my camera angle so that you can see a little bit better. So right now, obviously you can't see everything, but in this position, right? So let's say we have a, 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 a back to our chair. What we'd like to do and what you can do if you don't have uh, a back to your chair or it's a little uncomfortable to sit all the way back, you can take a rolled up towel. I'll use a, uh, a bolster here that we use and you can put that against the back of your chair to give you a little bit more upright posture. So now I'm not leaning all the way back or I'm not arching, right? So I have something to give my back that almost that upright posture that you kind of see. If, you're, if your chair has some armrests, I'm sorry, you can't see my face right now, but if it has armrests, you know, ideally at that roughly 90 degree angle, or if your, your workplace setup has that, or an approximate 90 degree angle will allow you to kind of get that better position. Um, ideally you want your monitor, um, no further than two feet apart or no closer than 18 inches. Um, we want our thighs horizontal. So again, we want our thighs kind of horizontal. We don't want them in a tucked position, meaning that we don't want our knees above our hips that can cause some tightness in the front part of our hips causing our hip flexors and our pelvis to feel like we're shifting forward, which can then increase that arch in our back. Again, another huge complaint that we hear um, while we do this. Okay, and if you can, ideally, um, have your feet flat on the floor. If you have shorter legs or your desk chair is a little higher, you can put a thicker book, uh, a shoebox, something that can uh, give yourself some support with your feet. Uh, correct standing posture. So this is going to be a little harder for me to demonstrate, obviously, with the camera here. But as you can see on the uh, PowerPoint, um, we want to stand, you know, kind of in a nice relaxed shoulder position, our back straight, our pelvis with neutral alignment. Um, this allows um, some circulation in our legs, uh, keep, keeping our hips, knees, and ankle joints aligned with gravity. I want you to keep things simple. Like I alluded to before, you can change positions, move often and frequently. Like I said, the body craves and needs movement. Get up and move. Staying in one place for too long can lead to muscle tightness, joint stiffness, uh, decreased blood flow. Um, so we're gonna go over some exercises that you can do at your desk or your home setup. Um, these are some things that I will show you the pictures of, but also um, go ahead and back up and demonstrate as well. The first one is called a chin tuck. So with that, as you can see in the picture, um, the photo on the left, as you can see, my head is jutted forward. So that, as I was talking about, that's oftentimes the position that we end up spending more time in while we're kind of hunched over at our computer or maybe we're sitting reclined and we have our feet up where we're now just kind of in that position, right? So what we want to do is very simply bring the chin backwards, almost as if we're creating a double chin. So what I don't want to see happen is a knot, right? That's a very different motion than this. What this allows is allows the, the, the segments of the spine to get a little bit of movement, okay? Now this may be uncomfortable for some, so what I want you to do is take it nice and slow. Like if you can't feel like you can achieve a large range of motion, 
Go through what your body is comfortable with, okay? I'm gonna pause here and go back to our main page to make sure everything is going okay. All righty. Go back to our screen here. So the next one is, oops, apologize, um, shoulder blade rolls. So with that in a seated position, I'm gonna exaggerate this based on the chair that I'm in. So what we're gonna do is just roll the shoulders backwards, okay? So in that first position, you see that everything's kind of tucked down and in. So what we're going to do is just kind of relax and get them down and backwards, okay? This is a good way to open up that front part of the chest. Another thing that we can do is uh, shoulder blade pinching. Now in this uh, picture, you can see that the arrows, typically again, the, the, that first one on the left, we're in that rounded posture position, right? So that, that creates an outward movement of our shoulder blades. We want them to sit nice down and back. So what we can do, again, is just kind of pinch the shoulder blades down and back, okay? Again, it's a small movement. It doesn't need to be over-exaggerated. Um, we want to squeeze those shoulder blades back, hold them for, you know, two to three seconds, and then relax. The one thing you want to avoid with this is shrugging, especially if you have any irritation up in the neck region. So a lot of times when I cue patients to go down and back, they kind of come up and do one of these where they tend to only feel it up in these upper neck muscles, right? So we're going pinching down and back. So there's minimal movement here up at the neck. We're just pretending that we have something in between our shoulder blades that we're trying to pinch. going into some lower body things that we can do. Um, some squats, um, some mini squats. If you, you have um, a chair, an ottoman, um, your bed, a couch, whatever um, surface or level that you feel is um, sturdy enough to support you, you can do with that. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. Okay, so from this position, what I just want you to do, we're just gonna stand and sit. Okay. Now we're going to tap. The one thing that I want you to avoid is kind of sticking the butt back and creating that big arch that puts a lot of pressure on the lower part of the spine. Another thing that we want to avoid is just leaning forward as we're sitting down, right? So best we can, trying to keep a nice straight back, sitting down and coming back up, okay? Doing a set of, of 10 of these, you know, a couple times a day will definitely help keep the your joints and your muscles kind of move in a little bit better. Some seated heel raises. So this is gonna help with uh, pumping the fluid out of our lower extremities, our feet, our calves. Um, that'll help kind of get everything circulated again. I'm sure if uh, any of you have been in a car for too long or on a plane ride, your, your lower legs feel a little bit swollen. That's because as, as blood pools um, in our calves and feet, it requires muscle pumping action to get that fluid through the veins. Our veins are one-way valves. So if, you, if my hands are, are valves of our veins, right, as fluid tends to build, it's gonna push that so that as the veins are trying to flap and push fluid back up, if we have some swelling, that, that gap is going to be in between there, not allowing that fluid to go. So what's important is to get the muscles to pump and push that fluid down. So what we can do, Again, in a seated position here, right? We're just gonna raise our heels up off the ground. Now you can do this in a seated position. You can do this in a standing position. In the standing position, what I would recommend is, you know, if you have um, a ledge or a counter or something, something that you can get a little bit of support so that you can um, go up a little higher on your toes and you don't feel like you're unbalanced or you're, you're uh, unsteady. So what is good posture? As you can see, the picture on the left it demonstrates quote unquote poor posture. Now, having poor posture or having good posture doesn't necessarily equate with the pain that you're having or how much pain that you may be in. I'm gonna um, get out of this picture and talk a little bit, but it looks like we have, um, I'm gonna go to our chat real quick.
um, have a question that says, should we be doing 10 reps of all these exercises? That's a good general place to start. Um, if you feel like you can't get to 10 repetitions, do what you can. For oftentimes, um, it's, it's gonna depend on your, your tolerance level, your, um, your training experience, how active you are right now. If you're someone that's a little less active, um, a set of 10 may be you know, too pain provoking or maybe irritable where you have to do, you have to break it up into sets of five. If it's some, if for those of you that maybe are moderate activity level or somebody that's a little higher level, um, I would recommend incorporating some weights or some resistance with this. You can throw a resistance band around your knees and push your knees outward to make the squats a little harder. You can hold a weight in front of you. Um, call it a front leaded goblet squat. You can hold the weight here as you're going up and down, right? There's, there's different ways to make these, th these exercises a little harder or a little easier. But I think a general rule of thumb, you can start with a couple, uh, couple rounds of 10 and see how you feel. The one thing I want you to uh, realize is that you want to monitor your symptoms maybe in the next 24 to 36 hours. What we're looking for is to make sure that none of these exercises are increasing your pain. And what I mean by that is that you may still feel the uncomfortableness while you're doing that exercises. But if you stop, so let's say I'm doing some sit to stands and I have some back pain. I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable, but my pain is not changing, meaning that it's not getting more intense. It's not spreading. I'm gonna continue with that round. And then if I stop that exercise and that pain goes away, we're kind of in that safe zone where that we know that it's taxing our body a little bit, but it's still safe to proceed. Because I know oftentimes we want to stop moving or we wanna stop an exercise on the experience of pain. Um, another good thing that I like to, to share with people is think about you, and, and this has to be individualized to you. So that being, meaning that if you are experiencing a five out of 10 pain, that five out of 10 pain is unique to you and you only. Your threshold or your capacity to handle or your pain tolerance, for example, may be different than somebody else. So it has to be unique to you. So if um, we're talking a, a just general zero to 10 scale, zero being no pain, 10 being this is the worst pain I've had, I might, I might need to go to the emergency room. Maybe we're gonna hold off on that a little bit right now given the current state of things, but um, typically zero to three is um, that safe zone, that green light zone, meaning proceed. You know, it's okay if you're having that zero to three discomfort with an exercise. In that yellow light range, that maybe four to six, four to seven, you wanna monitor symptoms. So again, look at, you know, is, is your pain getting worse? Is it kind of stopping as soon as you stop the exercise? Monitor those 24 to 36 hour symptoms after you know, a bout of exercise to kind of see how everything is going. And then in that, that next category, that eight out of 10, nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, we're, we're gonna stop that exercise and we're gonna uh, carry on from there. Okay. Um, another question, how many times a day should you be doing some of these? Um, you can do them as frequently or as often as you see fit. Um, some of the ankle pumps or the squats, I would say, again, it has to be dependent on how you're doing, but I, I typically recommend people every you know, 30 to 60 minutes getting up and changing positions. Um, the, the old saying of just rest and let it get better is really um, something that we want to avoid for the most part. Now, if your pain is, is severe or extreme or it's hard to walk or hard to sit and laying down helps take that pain away, yeah, there are those instances where we need to just let things calm down. And maybe that, miss, maybe that means not doing an, a workout for a couple of days to letting everything calm down. Something else that's crucial um, to kind of posture, pain, and everything related, especially now that we're stuck in the home a little bit more, is being cognizant of your sleep quality. Um, obviously, you know, stress, anxiety, all those, those feelings are kind of ramping up a little bit that can be impacting your sleep. There is a, a relationship between the quality of sleep and how sensitive our body is to pain. So if you're somebody that is used to getting a solid seven, eight hours of sleep and you're only sleeping three or four hours now, your pain is, your body is gonna be a little bit more susceptible to some changes. And if you're doing an intense workout, your body is not able to recover as much when we're um, depriving it of sleep. 
So I would say, you know, focus on, you know, hydrating, getting good sleep, you know, eating well, focusing on that, staying active, staying moving, going for a long walk. You know, I, I see the sun's peeking out today. If you can, you know, go for a walk. And, but do what you can. Stay within your kind of frame of mind. If you're somebody that is used to running for long distances or long lengths of time, then you're okay with doing that. If you're somebody that is maybe new to running or maybe new to activity, go slow. You know, start out with, you know, maybe a mile run. See how your body responds to that. Something that we typically end up seeing is that when we stress our body a little too much, a little too quickly, that's when pain tends to kind of ramp up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to head back to, whoops, apologize. My PowerPoint here. Okay, and then I will go over some other exercises. So to recap, there are ways to make your workstation better. Um, don't stay in one position. Um, keep moving, stay consistent with exercise, and be patient and proactive. Okay, some other things that I want to um, talk about. Um, some other issues that we can work on um, for back pain. I, I know we talked about some squats, but I'm going to demonstrate some simple exercises or stretches that you can do at home while you're laying down. Uh, maybe you're in bed or on the couch. Um, so I'm going to get this angle here. Hopefully everybody can see me. Okay. We're going to go down. And with this, we're going to go down on onto your back. Um, a simple, easy one that you can do is when you're laying down, bringing your knees to your chest. Okay. We can do one leg at a time, or we can do both legs. Again, holding this for a couple seconds can help bend that lower part of the spine or open that up. Now, some of you may find this position or this movement um, irritating. Um, there is something called directional preference, meaning that some people may be better off with a bent position. Sometimes people feel better in an extended or straightened position. So all the things that I'm kind of showing you, I'm going to offer a couple different scenarios with that as well. Okay, so the one that I just demonstrated is called um, supine knees to chest or laying down knees to chest. And again, you can bring both knees to your chest or you can alternate and bring um, one or the other. Um, another one that you can do, I'm going I'm to show you this next one, is a, another good uh, mobility drill for the spine. Um, those of you that are either uh, patients of ours or you know, maybe have uh, some yoga experience, um, cat cow or cat camel, as they're uh, commonly referred to. Um, you're going to start in a uh, hands and knees position here. Everything nice and relaxed. Slowly arch the back. Let everything kind of arch. And then nice and round. Okay. Again, some of you may not be able to tolerate full range of motion with this. But do what you can. Okay. This is a good way... And again, we can isolate different segments. So I'm just isolating my lower back. Now I'm letting the shoulders shrug a little bit to get my mid back in it. And then you can even extend and flex the head to get your neck into that as well. Um, some back things that you can do in a seated position. I'm going to get back into my chair and just show some other things that we can do as well. So in the seated position here, you can cross your legs. And this is a good kind of glue or piriformis stretch. If you, um, some of us have done these uh, kind of laying down on our back where you bring your knees to your chest. But in the seated position, if you can cross your leg and then just slowly lean forward, you should feel a nice stretch in the middle part of your glute. You know, just kind of hanging out there for a little bit to see how that feels. Ideally, if you can hang on for 20 to 30 seconds, on each leg, that'd be great. Again, just leaning forward a little bit, get a little bit of pressure off those glutes. Another thing we can do in the seated position is just kind of some rotating, right? So we can cross our arms, getting that low back to kind of twist a little bit. Kind of reaching across. I'm keeping my lower body, my legs on the floor, nice and 
stable. I'm not twisting there. I'm just twisting from my upper body. Um, I have a question here um, about medicine balls or stability balls used to use as a desk chair for lower back pain. Um, I've had some patients with this that say that they, they enjoy doing that. Um, what I will say is if you've never done it before, start with a small period of time and see how you feel. Um, there's no kind of one quick solution or one, um, one thing that will help alleviate uh, low back pain. It's very, very common for people to have low back pain. Um, but if it's something that helps you feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more stable in that position, um, I do have a medicine ball that I will demonstrate as well for that. Right, so in this position, right, again, same rules kind of apply. You want a nice relaxed shoulder, a nice straight back. Make sure your workstation is roughly in this position. What I don't want people to do is be in this kind of rounded position here where now you're just putting a lot of pressure on that spine. This could be very uncomfortable and pain provoking for most. So again, this is a good position here where yes, it's definitely gonna challenge your core and your spine muscles to kind of keep you upright. But if what may work for some may not work for others. So it's really um, individualized for you, but I would encourage you to get, if you have a medicine ball to give it a shot. Um, some other things that I want to touch on are um, a good hip flexor stretch for those of us that are, are uh, seated for a long period of time. So I'm going to move this down a little bit so that you guys can see me. So what I would recommend, and if um, there's some of you that have uh, sensitive or irritable knees, I would put a pillow or a cushion underneath the knee that's down. I have a yoga mat in front of me, that's why. But we're going to keep one knee down and the other knee in front of us here. What I want you to think about doing is kind of tucking your pelvis under a little bit. So the way that we're going to help doing that is the knee, the leg that is down, we're going to contract and squeeze that glute muscle. Kind of locks everything in place. Okay, we're going to walk that opposite leg out a little bit. And we're just going to oscillate forward. As you can see, everything here is nice and stacked. I'm not doing... One of these where I'm arching and putting a lot of pressure there. Okay, you'll feel a little bit more an intense stretch. Like I said, if you can kind of control and tuck that pelvis under by squeezing your glute here, keeping everything nice and tall, and then just leaning forward here, it should be a very small amount of motion that you should feel that nice um, top part of the quad muscle. Feel a little bit of stretch. Now, for those of you that maybe are a little bit more advanced, a little bit more flexible, that need a little bit more. Um, push, what you can do with that knee that's down is elevate it a little bit. So if you have a, a stool or an ottoman or a cushion, you can elevate that back leg so that as you're driving forward, as you elevate that, you'll get a longer, deeper stretch on the front part of that quad. Okay. Um, some other questions that we had got uh, previous to this um, was what stretches help reduce lower back stiffness? Again, there's not one particular exercise that's gonna be a one size fits all. Um, I demonstrated the laying on your back, bringing both knees to your chest, bringing um, one knee at, to a chest at a time. You can bring your knees to your chest and then rotate. So what that might look like is in a laying down position, bringing your knees to your chest and then letting them fall to one side so as I'm rotating my legs to the left, I'm using my left arm on my right leg to rotate. If I'm rotating to the right, I'm gonna use my right arm onto my left leg and rotate to the side, okay? The, the figure four stretch or the pigeon pose that I showed you in a seated position, you can also do that laying down. Um, a lot of our exercises in our soft tissue mo mobility, meaning things that you can do to your uh, muscles with either a lacrosse ball, a mobility ball, a foam roller, a kettlebell, you can find them on our React um, page on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and type in React Physical Therapy, we have different segments of things that are broken down um, by uh, lower body releases, upper body releases, upper body and lower body mobility, upper and lower body strengthening. So if, there, if you are equipped with some bands or um, some weights, there are um, a good amount of 
videos that demonstrate some things that we can do at home. Um, as always, feel free to reach out to us. Um, go to www.bereact.com, bereact.com. You can um, find some information about our, our locations. We have four locations in the Chicagoland area. I uh, currently treat out of our River North uh, location. We have a West Loop uh, clinic on the corner of Jackson and Sangamon. We have a Lincoln Park location um, near the North and Clybourne intersection. We also have our Lakeshore East um, facility um, near Maggie Daly Park um, behind Michigan and Randolph. We also have uh, two Northern suburb locations in Deerfield and Wilmette. Um, feel free to reach out to us uh, on, you know, give us a call, um, email us or um, send us a mes message on social media. We are more than happy. We are currently open and seeing patients. So we, you know, as I know that some of these times may be trying and you can't get into us, we are in the process of starting um, getting some telehealth uh, services going so that we can reach our patients that maybe are not able to get to us. Um, so I have a question. What about hamstrings? I heard sitting all day makes some super tight hamstrings. Okay, I'm glad you actually brought that up. Uh, we have, I have a, um, an alternate to a hamstring exercise that I uh, tend to use. It's a little bit more dynamic. And with that, I mean that it's less of a bend over, throw your, your leg up and stretch. So I'm going to lower this here so you can see. Okay. It's called the 90-90 hamstring stretch. So in this position, I have my right leg straight. I'm bringing my left leg back to 90 degrees. I'm supporting my thigh with the back of my hand. If this is too much for you or this puts too much stress on your neck, you can use a towel or a belt, something to hold your hip at a 90 degree angle here. As, it, as this is maintained at a 90 degree angle, you're gonna straighten your leg until you meet resistance. When you meet resistance, you're then gonna flex your foot towards you so you get a little bit of a calf stretch as well. You're gonna relax the foot, relax the knee, and then we're gonna repeat. Again, meeting as we meet resistance. As you will find, I would recommend trying a round of 15 on each side. What you will find is that as you do this more, you will get more range of motion, meaning that you, you don't have to push through that barrier where you're like, if I just push a little bit harder into the stretch, I'll feel a little bit better. Um, all right, folks, is there... Um, anything that I can answer that, um, any last questions before we kind of sign off here? Again, you can find us at six locations, uh, four in the city, two in the northern um, suburbs, uh, www.bereact.com. Uh, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to help you um, kind of get out of pain and back to what you're doing. Uh, thank you all for joining. Um, and hopefully um, we will come across um, you guys and hit, hopefully um, be able to help you in these uh, times of pain and discomfort, but stay well, stay safe, and uh, please, everybody, um, wash your hands. All right, thank you.